Good morning, welcome to week seven. This week we're photographing ourselves in our work. Week six was write about yourself in your work. And in the first five weeks we did a bunch of different things, but among them we did some research. We uh, looked for artists in our field. We looked for artists' portfolios in our field. Uh, and we created the all important viewer profile. Quick reminder for those of you who don't necessarily read uh, all the weekly info pieces, um, the viewer profile is not a profile of the artist you want to be. It's the profile of the person who can empower you to be the artist you want to be. So if I'm a painter, the viewer profile is not of a painter I admire, it's of a curator in a gallery who can show my work. If I'm a graphic designer, it's not a profile of a graphic designer I admire, it's a profile of an art director or creative director at an ad agency or someone who can hire me or commission work from me. If I'm a children's book illustrator, if I'm an animator, etc. It's not the artist you admire, it's the person who hires, commissions, works with what you do. Why is this viewer profile critical? Because when you make portfolio, when you make portfolio choices like writing about yourself in your work, photographing yourself in your work, there is no absolute best way to write about these things. There's no absolute best way to photograph these things. It's always in the context of who you're trying to communicate to. Um, I want as much info, as many words on, or important relevant words on your homepage as possible, but if I land on your website and you're a tattoo artist or a children's book illustrator, it should be pretty clear to me without reading a single word what you are. If you're a tattoo artist and I think I leaned on your website and I think you might be a children's book illustrator or vice versa, there's something really wrong. So always having this viewer profile, this person that you're trying to speak to in mind is a great way to make sure that your choices in everything you do, the work you chose, choose to show, how you show it, uh, how you write about it, everything is focused to communicate to your audience. Um, going all the way back to week one, when I talked about making a specific choice. Don't be afraid, you've got many things that you're, you're interested in, don't be afraid to narrow it down, make a specific choice. Uh, when, you land, when I land on your homepage, I should see your name, nice big name, tell me who you are, don't make it a secret, and then under your name, give yourself a title. It should say, Glenn Zuckman, children's book illustrator. If I'm looking for photography or fine art or something else, I immediately know it's the wrong place. Even if I'm looking for illustrations but not children's book, I know it's the wrong place. Don't worry about cutting those people loose because they were never going to hire you anyway. But if someone is looking for a children's book illustrator, don't make it hard to find you. Make it clear right away. Glenn Zuckman, explorer of the dark and curious. So that's not a specific media choice the way children's book illustrator is or uh, surf and action sports graphic artist would be. Uh, but Explorer of the Dark and Curious, if that's my title, it's gonna, it's gonna cut a lot of people loose right away. A lot of people are not looking for that. But again, they weren't gonna work with me anyway, so it's fine. Um, but if somebody lands on my page and says, Explorer of the Dark and Curious, that's my life's mission on this planet. I need to dive into this website and find out what this person means by that and what's going on there. So be specific, make it easy and immediate for the people who are most likely to connect with you to connect with you. That was our point in week one. That's our point in writing about ourselves. So week six, last week was uh, write about yourself and your work. To write about yourself, so in journalism they use uh, an inverted, inverted triangle. What does that mean? It means get the important stuff out right away because if uh, most people aren't going to read the whole thing. You know, to read every word in every article in the New York Times or Al Jazeera or the South China Morning Post or The Guardian, it would take you all day. Nobody has time to read that much. So people turn through the physical or digital pages of the newspaper or whatever they're looking at, whatever their source is, and some people look at pictures or headlines or read the first sentence or the first paragraph. The most interested people, the people who you may have the most in common with and connections with, they may read all thousand, two thousand, six thousand words of this article. But that's not most people. Most people, the first paragraph maybe. So um, we talk about, in journalism, they talk about the five W's, who, what, when, where, why, and how. 
Got to get that in right away. First sentence, first two sentences, first paragraph. Explain everything and then get into the details. It's the same thing for your viewer profile. Get the value proposition out, what you're offering someone out right away. Make it clear, say it up front. Don't go on about you're a student at Long Beach State. Don't go on about the watercolors your grandma gave you when you were six. Those things can come later if you'd like them to, but up front is the value proposition. Everybody who got as far as your about statement has pain that they think you might be able to take away, has friction that they think you might be able to smooth out. Clearly this is true for commercial art. It's actually, I think, true for gallery art as well. Um, ah, good morning, thank you. Good morning, here we are. Food has arrived, yay. Here we are, I have cafe, burgers, Awesome, fries, thank you. Ketchup on the side for us. Great, thanks a lot. We're at the Monterey Park Golf Course and we have just received our M burger and fries. A little ketchup, a little water. So, um, Inverted triangle, say it right away. Seasoned fries, yay, look at that. Oh, you can't really. It's got herbs and stuff on it. Yum. Inverted triangle, get it up front, say it right away. Value proposition, um, in, in the commercial sense, it's clear, I'm a small business owner, I need a logo and identity system, I need menus, I need print ads, I need web ads, whatever it might be that I need. Tell me how you're going to take that pain away, take that friction away, solve that problem for me. Gallery artists, I think it's actually not that different. A curator is also a person who has problems that they think you might be able to solve. If I'm a curator at a gallery, yes, it's true, there is a constant flood of portfolios coming across my desk. People wanted me to look at their work, but I'm curating a show on some themed uh, concept that I want to explore. I may have a lot of portfolios coming across my desk. A lot of that work is not answering the question that I'm trying to ask with this, pe with this exhibition I'm curating. Um, where are the strongest pieces or the pieces that resonate with other pieces that I can put in this show? That's not so easy to find. So if you are somebody's answer to their graphic design needs, to their gallery exhibition needs, to their wearable art needs, to all kinds of needs in the universe of art that we all, for 90 folks, create in many different ways, make it clear right away. Write about your work. For gallery artists, you have a little more flexibility, but you don't have to have a million secrets. You can help people access your work a little bit. For commercial artists, all the choices you make are choices to help your clients speak to their audience. Explain these fonts, this color palette, these graphic stylings were chosen to help my client communicate to their audience. It's kind of like the viewer profile. Again, there is no absolutely correct solution. There's a solution that speaks to a specific audience. Um, okay, photography, which is what we're actually doing this week, week seven. Uh, again, take a look at the website. There's some info, and it talks about lighting and backgrounds and, and really important things like that. But basically our mission is two pictures. Please don't just scroll through your photo and find some shitty old photo. This is really important, serious stuff as important as a spice, uh, season fry. Headshot, nice lighting, not super contrasting, probably, unless that's what you're exploring, um, but not dead flat. A little bit of, of directionality to the light. Um, I think on the website we talk about using a reflector, window light, all those things, but a clean, simple background that presents uh, just a, a great chance to see you as a person. Environmental portrait, you and your space. If you're lucky enough to be, you know, a sculptor working with big chunks of metal and you have cool welding torches and goggles you can put on your forehead or around your neck, that's all very graphic and is, is, is beautiful stuff to photograph. If you're a graphic designer, illustrator, and you work on a laptop or a tablet or something, maybe not quite as sexy as the welder with all those tools, 
but um, you know, let's say you have a small desk shoved up against the wall of your room in your parents' house. Um, maybe go to Starbucks, take your laptop or your or tablet and you know, work in Illustrator or Photoshop or Procreate or whatever you work in at Starbucks and have um, your latte and your muffin kind of on the table and we see you in that context of a, of a, you know, a, a contemporary creative. Uh, have your friend come with their iPhone and take a picture of you in that space or maybe it's you on a Zoom call um, gesturing uh, you know, emphatically to a client to explain a concept. But try to come up with two great photos that express um, you as an artist in your world. If somebody knows about your world, if you're showing metal work and they know all about those processes, then showing you in your space lets them confirm that you are using similar techniques and connect and so on, whether they're another metals artist or a very interested collector of metals. If someone doesn't know about your work, you're letting them into a world that if if they're looking at this page, they're interested in what your world is and they don't know all about it, so help educate them. By the way, if you have trade secrets, trade secrets are not helpful if you keep them to yourself. They're only helpful if you give them away. Uh, it's very empowering to tell people how to do things that you've figured out, whether it's a metals process or a, you know, a graphic design trick. Either way, share those secrets. Um, explain it, make, make a case study page on your website or a blog post or talk about it in a, in a photo, but share those secrets, they really help connect. Um, when you present work, yes we want to see the work and maybe a detail of the work, but also give us context, put that work in the world and let us experience it. If you're a painter, yes we need to see the painting and probably details of the painting, but can you add a photo of the painting in a gallery uh, where we see other works in the background or maybe you or someone in the space or in a living room stick it on a wall and we can see it in the context of other stuff in the home. Um, if you do metal work, so uh, or let's say wearable metal work, um, so wearables, metal, fiber, other media, it's about the body. For all of human history, we've cared a lot about the human body. We're in an interesting moment now, uh, a moment, I read a book some years ago called High Tech, High Touch, and the idea was that it's become ever more digital, ever more mediated, ever more uh, detached, which is very powerful and empowering in many ways, our phones and virtual worlds and all these things, but we are, as corporeal beings, also miss the physical. So I think as we become more digital, you'll notice the rise of tattoos and piercings and things that are very corporeal, very physical. So when you do wearable art, you could just photograph the art or you could put the piece on a mannequin, but put it on a human body, your own or somebody else's, or put it on a body that you think it looks great and exciting and inspiring and corporeal on. Make it as real as you can. Show the painting in a gallery, show your wearable art, your metalwork or other media on the body. If it's graphic design, if you made a, a, a salsa label, you could just take that 2D image and slide it over to your website, boom, done. But go ahead and use 3D rendering software and show me that label actually on uh, a rendered bottle. Better yet, go to the market, buy a jar of salsa, uh, soak the label off, make a print of your label, glue it on, take a picture of that, now we can see it in 3D. Better yet, go to the market, buy three jars of salsa and two bags of chips. Uh, take the first bag of chips and the first jar of salsa and eat them because all this food's going to make you hungry. Now you have two jars of salsa and one bag of chips. Take one jar of salsa, soak the label off, glue your label on. Now take a setting, whether it maybe is Latin or Southwestern or some other sensibility that you're going for in this piece. Set out a tablecloth or, or something. Um, put your jar with the label, put a bowl with the, the second jar of salsa dumped into it, put a bowl with chips, take a great photo of that. Now I look at that and I see not only that you can use Illustrator to make shapes and lay out type, but you have art directed a whole scene. You've created a compelling experience for me. You've made me hungry, which was the point of the salsa label. The point of the label is to make people hungry. So again, a painting in a gallery, wearable art on the body, a, a, an attractive human physical body, uh, salsa labels in the world, making people want chips and salsa. Take pictures of yourself and your work. 
that are as engaging and as compelling as possible that speak to the person you profiled in your viewer profile. Okay, sorry this video is so long. Shout out if I can help. Happy to jump on Zoom anytime. Happy to chat by email anytime. Uh, make great work. Good luck with everything.